If you feel like your hamstrings are really tight, your first thought might be that you have to stretch them a whole lot more. But what if you're one of those people who can palm the floor quite easily, yet you still experience hamstring tension? Moreover, the research on stretching in general points more towards improving stretch tolerance than it does to actually relieving tension. So what should we do in this case if we're experiencing tight hamstrings? In this video, I'm gonna teach you why it is that hamstring stretching isn't the best thing to do if your hamstrings feel tight, how you can determine what type of movements you should actually do to improve tension in your hamstrings, and then I'll coach you through those exercises. In order for the hamstrings to approximate maximal length, you have to have the ability to extend the knee and flex the hip. The maximal endpoint of those motions is about 90 degrees of hip flexion. We see this in a test called the straight leg raise. In order for you to have a full straight leg raise, the back lower portion of the pelvis or the posterior lower portion has to become eccentric. When this happens, the sacrum tips forward or nutates because the back of the pelvic floor relaxes. And then we see an eccentric action of the hamstrings because of rotations that happen at the femur. So you might think if you don't have that 90 degrees of hip flexion in a straight leg raise, you probably should stretch your hamstrings, right? Well, the problem is that the sensation of tension doesn't always correlate with muscle length. Your muscles have tension at rest at all times. And there can be increased tension to keep us upright at any portion of the range. You can have some individuals who are quite flexible experience hamstring tension. And that doesn't mean that those flexible folks need to stretch more. You can feel this yourself if you straighten your elbow and straighten your arm behind you. If you do this, you're gonna experience some tightness in your bicep. Does that mean you should stretch your bicep more? Well, it's at end range. Some individuals experience the same phenomenon in their hamstrings. They have a ton of flexibility and stretching is actually counterproductive to reducing that tension. And think about this, folks. If I put a stretch on a muscle at any length and there's increased tension or contraction occurring at that muscle, it's just gonna fight against it, causing a rebound effect. This is because of Newton's law. If I apply a force to a muscle, that muscle is going to exert an equal and opposite force. So if I stretch a muscle, it's going to contract. What we have to do different is restore the biomechanics that I discussed earlier with hip flexion. If we can do this, that ought to improve our straight leg raise because if I change the mechanics of the bones, then the muscles may not have to produce as much tension because I have more available movements to choose at my disposal. This is gonna alter loading through the legs and that can make your hamstrings more comfortable. In order to know what to do, we have to test where we're at with the straight leg raise. Once we have that information, then we can choose an exercise that will target the specific biomechanics to improve our sense of tension and tightness. So the way you're gonna test your active straight leg raise is you're gonna lie on your back with your palms facing directly up. You wanna to look to the horizon. From here, you're gonna keep your knees straight. You don't have to actively squeeze your quad a bunch. Just make sure you keep the knees straight and go really slow until you feel a tug on the hamstring or you notice that the other leg bends up. You're gonna do a couple rounds. I would take a video of this and you wanna estimate the angle, right? So right here, I'm at about 50, 55 degrees, I would say. Typically, a normal straight leg raise is anywhere from 70 to 90 degrees. But we can use this information to get an idea as to why we might be experiencing hamstring tension. Because depending on where your straight leg raise is, you may need different interventions to reduce the hamstring tension. If your straight leg raise is less than 45 degrees, then I would consider doing the thirsty desert pose to help loosen up the hips. Here's what that looks like. You're gonna get a couple pads or pillows. You're gonna put that just over your stomach, making sure that your chest hangs over the pads. From here, you're gonna take one of your knees. You want the inner portion of the knee to be relaxing on the ground, so I'm gonna move my knee out slightly. I'm gonna take that same side arm, I'm gonna bring it down 
right about here. So my trunk side bends just a little bit. The opposite arm is gonna be reaching forward like so, and I'm gonna look at the hand. I'm gonna silently breathe in through the nose. Exhale, I'm gonna press with the inner elbow and the inner knee, just a little bit, like a three out of 10 effort, allowing my chest to come up. But you wanna make sure that you don't arch up like this and lose the lower ribs on the pads. You wanna keep them there. Hold this pressure, silent in through the nose. Exhale, you're gonna slowly walk your fingers up like you're trying to get that little bit of water because you're dying of thirst in the desert. You're gonna do three to five rounds of five breaths each side on that leg and recheck your straight leg raise. You'll wanna do this for quite a few weeks just to make sure your straight leg raise is consistently at 45 or above before moving on to the next move. If your straight leg raise is within that 45 to 60 degree range, then I would do the walking wall squat. What you wanna do is you wanna be about three or four feet away from the wall, not to where your arms have to be locked out. You're gonna get a ball or a yoga block to put between the knees. You wanna soften the knees, make sure you look directly at the wall. You're gonna silently breathe in through the nose, exhale, keeping the knees still, you're gonna walk down the wall slowly like you got suction cups on your hands. As you do this, you want the hips to go back, chest to go down, just get a slight hinge. From here, you're gonna walk down, again, keep those suction cups on the hands, squat a little bit, you'll feel the back of the legs get torched. You're gonna go silent in through the nose, soft exhale through the mouth, make sure the eyes stay on the wall. The biggest screw up that I see with that move is as the person does the hinge, they end up drifting the knees backwards. You wanna make sure that the knees stay fixed. The other issue that I'll see is as people squat down, they end up rounding or they end up pushing the hips too far back. And then the third thing that I see is people not using the hand suction. You really wanna make sure that you're pushing away from the wall the whole time. So if you're just sliding down the wall, chances are that's gonna limit the degree that you'll be able to get access to the back of the hips. I would do four to five sets of five breaths two times per day. If you're that person who has that really flexible straight leg raise, you actually want to increase muscle activity of the lower glutes and the upper hamstrings. This is going to normalize the straight leg raise and can reduce muscle tension that's being produced when a muscle is at a longer length. You'll wanna get a mini band, place it above the knees. You're gonna lie on your back with your feet and knees completely together. Hands are gonna be just below the belly button. From here, you're gonna get pressure through the inner heel and the base of the big toe. You're gonna gently press straight down on both legs, not forcing. I usually work up to like a four out of 10 effort and I start to feel the hamstrings work. From here, I'm gonna keep that inner foot pressure. I'm gonna just gently push my knees out without tipping the feet at all. That's gonna start to engage the glutes. You're gonna hold this position, silently breathe in through the nose, soft exhale through the mouth and you'll feel the abs work. You wanna hold this position for about four sets of five breaths. Many common screw ups happen at the foot with this move. If you're someone who presses the feet too hard in, or when you lift the knees out, your feet come up off the ground, you will lose the benefits. You wanna make sure that the feet stay flat. Other issues with this move involve bridging way too high by applying too much foot pressure or tucking the hips. Both of those will limit the degree of muscle activity increased in the area that we're trying to improve. Now, many times people who have tight hamstrings also experience a lot of calf tension. If that's you, I'd check out this video right here where I go into a sequence that I use to reduce calf muscle activity and improve ankle range of motion.